Hi. Hello. Is this, oh, okay. Uh, my name is Josh. Uh, let's see, where should I start? So I'm going to share with you guys my testimony. Um, I was born in Long Beach at Memorial Hospital. And uh, I grew up in, uh, in uh, you know, Long Beach for the first four years of my life. And then after that four years, my mom and my dad decided to move to Bellflower. And we lived in Bellflower for the past six years. Um, it was a little chaotic because my mom and my dad constantly argued. And, uh, you know, my dad was a drug addict. He did methamphetamine almost every day. Uh, toward the end, he did it almost every day. So, you know, I was in Bellflower for quite a long time until 2005 in May uh, when my mom and my dad had gotten into a fight. And my, my dad, uh, he uh, socked my mom in the face. So my mom, you know, she was just like, we need to get out of here. You know, we can't, we can't stay here anymore. It's, it's getting to be too much. So, you know, we see Eddie here in the back. He's my step-grandfather. Uh, some of you might know my Nana, Maggie. Uh, we, we, we moved over there afterwards, my mom, my brother, Samuel, and I. And we've been there ever since. Um, so, you know, they're Christian, you know. Uh, I, I grew up, you know, Christian by name for, you know, predominantly my whole life until I came to Long Beach, back to Long Beach, the second time. It was there, you know, after my dad had died, this, this, you know, there was this underlying sense of just rage within me, you know, mixed emotions, especially as I was becoming a teenager, you know, you have these hormones in you, you just want to, you know, you just, there's all these mixed emotions. And it, it led me down some really, really dark paths. It, 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 it was, it was interesting, but I thank God for it because it, it has brought me ultimately to Jesus Christ. So during the span of time, I was nine years old when I moved to my grandma's house with Eddie, with my mom and my brother. And, you know, during that time, <laughs> I remember, you know, a lot of funny things. We had a lot of good times, a lot of bad times. But as time went on, and I got into middle school, and I eventually came to high school, uh, about seventh or eighth grade, I began to just go the opposite way from what I grew up in. And what I grew up in, you know, every time we ate dinner, it would be, you know, we would pray to God, and we'd have this, this uh, little prayer we did. It was, um, you know, uh, like something like, God is good, God is great. Let us thank him for this food. By his hands we are fed. We are fed. Give us Lord our daily bread. Uh, you know, so I, I, I had Christ all around me, but I didn't have Christ in me. This is, you know, that, that's how I grew up. And, yeah, yeah, I think it was about eighth grade. I, uh, I started smoking cigarettes because I saw everyone else doing it. My grandma was smoking, my mom was smoking, my best friends were smoking. So I grabbed a cigarette because my friend had given me one and I smoked it and then it stayed with me for the next three and a half years. So I smoked for three years, three and a half years, cigarettes. And by the time I got to the end of eighth grade, I was already smoking marijuana. So I was smoking cigarettes, marijuana, and by the time I'd gotten to the middle or end end of ninth grade, I was drinking every weekend. <laughs> so I smoked cigarettes every day, about a pack and about a pack, maybe a little less than a pack a day. I drank every weekend. I would sell my things. I would steal change to get the things I wanted, which did not satisfy me. I had to keep doing it. I had to keep doing it for that sense of satisfaction. And I remember this time, um, I was in a band with my friend Chris, Chris Bentley. And we had gotten uh, a, a handle, a handle is about this tall, about that thick, of Captain Morgan's rum. And by the end of the night, between two people, there was this much left out of that whole container. Now, I smoked cigarettes then, you know. So I, was, I think I was about 15. 
I walked out and I had my cigarette in my hand. I couldn't even light it. I was drunk beyond comparison. I dropped my cigarette. I went down to pick it up. I fell and I hit my face against the back of a car. <laughs> and I had this scratch from about right here. There's actually, you could, I have freckles. You could probably see a patch right here without freckles. I don't know, maybe if you talk to me and see up close, you'll see this little tiny patch without freckles. Maybe one day I'll show you a picture too. I took a couple pictures. I don't have one of them, but I think I have the other. After that, <laughs> I didn't drink that much. But, um, so, you know, obviously very far from God in, 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 at that time of point in my life. I still came home, you know, I still prayed with the family, but deep down inside, I did not like it. As time progressed, I <coughs> taught myself, or I should say more, more or less, Satan taught me to hate Christians. I hated Christians. The same, almost how uh, Islam, Islamic people hate Christians. I hated Christians that much. I saw a Christian, I cringed. I heard the name of Jesus, I was like, I need to get out of here. I don't like it. I hated it. And I had such a mouth on me. F Christians. I effing hate Christians. I had a mouth. You could ask my mom. <laughs> Eddie didn't hear too much. I was kind of reserved. <laughs> but I mean, you could ask my mom. You could ask my brother. You could ask anybody, anybody who knew me the way I was before Jesus Christ, they would say this guy was was just nuts, man. I had you know long, crazy hair, parted halfway. You know, I, I was the guy that was like metal and marijuana and yeah, yeah. Um, so there was a time, you know, I came out of high school. I dropped out of Wilson because. I, you know, I didn't go. They're going to give me a truancy ticket for about $549 or something. Wilson was crazy. I did a lot of stupid stuff there. I, uh, I, uh, I cussed out a teacher because he cussed me out. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's just it's interesting. I look back and I just, I, I think I just thank God that it didn't turn out as worse as it was because I, in my opinion, it was pretty bad, especially after I went to OFL. OFL was, I don't know if you know, it's a, it's, you stay at home school. You, you do your packets at home and you go in twice a week. That I feel like was, I had walked into darkness, literally. That was when I hated God the most of my life. Yeah, as a matter of fact, uh, that's when I was smoking weed every day. I spent, you know, maybe 60 bucks every couple days on weed. You know, I would buy, try to buy cigarettes every day or I would take my mom's. She hated that so much. Um, and you know, when you do that stuff every day, it changes you. It changes you. Even if I was sober going through all that, I was a lot different because I had done all that. It really, really messes with your mind a lot, especially when you're alone as much as I was. I would sit in my room when I got home and waste time. I would sit there and I would just think. I would think about all the misfortunes. I would think about all the things wrong with my life. I would say, how can there be a God that loves me when he has taken my father away, when he has sent us to a place where I don't want to be? He doesn't know what I want. If these Christians are telling me what he wants, what he thinks is right for me, no. So that was when I became an atheist. I believed in Scientology for a little while. You know, the Earth is 4.5 billion years old. <laughs> Evolution, man. Evolution, man. Yeah. Um, well, what's another thing? Um, you know, fossils, you know, dinosaurs. It's all cool stuff. It's interesting. 
but it's pointless. So, you know, I, I went through that little phase. I was atheist for about a year and a half. And then that's, you know, I saw Eddie going to church. Eddie here in the back. He was going, you know, he's, he's always, you know, gone to church and stuff. And he's always, you know, been, been, been really, you know, devoted to, to the Lord. And I don't know, I think it was about two Decembers ago. I had seen that, and that's when I that's that's when I thought it was a thought popped up in my head. It was just like go to church, go to church, and I questioned why is this in my mind? Why is there a voice in my head telling me to go to church when obviously you guys, as I have told you, I hated Christians. I did not want to go to church. So why was this voice there? So. I remember the day, too. I don't remember the date, but I remember the day. I walked up to Eddie the day before a Sunday service, and I said, I want to go to church tomorrow. And he was like, really? <laughs> you want to go to church? Okay. And I was like, yeah, I want to go to church. <laughs> you know? I mean, that, that, that was when I, you know, they would walk in, like, hey, Josh. And I'm like, hey. What? What do you want? <laughs> you know, I. S you know, it was it, it, it was it was funny. So he was just surprised that I wanted to go. So I I, I went. <laughs> I, I I remember it was in it was in the church I'm with now, Grace and Truth. I was sitting there. You know, it was it was uh, I started going in March of 2011 or 12? 12. 2012, March 2012. So I was sitting there, you know, I had gone, you know, a couple months or so. I would sit there, you know, I'm still atheist. I would sit there and be like, I don't want to say it, but I'll, 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 I'll use an acronym. This is BS sitting in my head. <laughs> this, you know, I don't know about this, man. I'm kind of iffy about it. So, you know, the more I went, the more there was just something moving in me. You know, when you hear the word of God, you can't just expect things to stay the same, especially when you hear it over and over and over again because the Bible says faith comes by hearing the word. So I felt like the more I went to church, the more there was this little piece of faith in me growing. Even though I was still doubtful, I just kept going. And then I found myself one day in May uh, uh, Pastor Ray Slayman asked me if I was saved and if I had a Bible, and I said no to both questions. <laughs> and you know, that's when he prayed with me to accept the Lord, and he gave me a Bible. And to be honest, I felt the same. I didn't feel like I had accepted the Holy Spirit at that point. So you know, that summer I continued to do the same things. I didn't smoke cigarettes anymore and I didn't drink, but I smoked marijuana every day. Every day, almost every day. And then it came to a point where I was getting baptized. And a couple weeks before I was getting baptized, it was about a couple days after my birthday, with it, which is July 26th, my baptismal was August 12th. And I'd just been in my room. I had one little lamp on. It was kind of, you know, dark in my room. And there was something wrong. You know, there was something hitting me. I was sitting there and I, like, it was, I could, I could barely breathe. I, you know, there was, I was just sitting there and it was about midnight. I was sitting there and I felt the Holy Spirit around me, convicting me, telling me things, saying, you can't keep living like this. You're getting baptized. You're going to proclaim my name, and you're still living this way. You're not saved. And that is when I cried. I literally cried. No one has ever really seen me cry, especially for a long time. But I was crying in my room. And that's when I accepted the Lord Jesus. Crazy. It was, it was so weird because after that, I never felt the same. And I, I let me go back a little bit because I just skipped something very important. 
the last, you know, uh, before I started coming to church for, you know, maybe about a span to um, July of 2011 to December of 2011, I was extremely depressed. You know, I, I told you guys, Eddie would walk in and I would be like, hey, what? <laughs> you know, there, were, there would be nights where I would just cry myself to sleep. I didn't know why, but I did not want to live anymore. I had predicted by the time I was 21, about there, that I would commit suicide. I had predicted. And then after that night, when I was just crying out to God, I didn't feel that way anymore. It, 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 he, he just filled me with the joy of the Holy Spirit and everything changed from that day. Everything always changes from the day you're saved. You go from this guy who is in the world, who is doing worldly things, and you become this guy. I was just at a friend's house the other day and I was talking to his mom. And she's like, you're so serious. What happened to you? What's going on? You're not the Josh I know. And I said, well, I have Jesus. And she's like, oh, you're one of those religious guys now. <laughs> and I said, no, I'm not religious. I don't believe in religion. I believe in Jesus Christ. There's a di I believe that there is a difference between a Christian and a follower of Jesus. Yes. There's a very big difference because I have seen people who profess to be Christian and profess to be ambassadors of Christ and misrepresent. Now don't get me wrong, we all misrepresent in a way because we are all sinners. But there is fruit in repentance. There's a difference between a repentant Christian and a Christian who says they're Christian who lives in their sins. But I thank God that he opened my eyes finally. Thanks for the opportunity to...